welcome back students so in the previous lecture we saw the rotational and the vibrational motions of a diatomic and a polyatomic molecule and we also obtain expressions for the same now in this particular lecture we will see the more into how you obtain the overall partition function for a polyatomic molecule so what we are going to see in this lecture is the polyatomic gases in general the rotational partition function and then vibrational partition function and then finally how the overall thermodynamic properties are obtained so we have been talking about the rotational and vibrational states so we will also see the examples what do they mean what do they mean by the rotational state and the vibrational state so the partition function initially it was diatomic now it is polyatomic so it may be expanded to encompass molecular entities comprised of a greater number of atoms so when i talk about greater number of atoms that is greater than 2 so in the case of a molecule consisting of n atoms there will be existing 3n modes of kinetic energy so you have n number of atoms you will have 3n kinetic energy mode so it means that you will have x y and z coordinate for each of the modes so it you multiply with by 3 it will become 3n kinetic energy modes out of that alongside means along with this 3n kinetic energy mode there are also the energy residing within the electron states of the said molecule so which we will not consider here we will only consider the kinetic energy mode and out of that 3n we have to fix or we, there are some modes which are already constrained due to other motion other than kinetic energy what are those they are either the kinetic energy which is comprising from the vibrational or from the rotational motion so we have to subtract those energy that is the degrees of freedom so we will get the overall degrees of freedom so we will see what it means so if i want to write out the uh, overall translation partition function that is q translational we have already written and derived this q translational it will be 2 pi into summation of mi so number of atoms you have in the polyatomic gases you sum up those atoms into kt so mi means only sum of mi it is not over kt divided by h square by into v so this is the overall translational function for uh, n atoms so you multiply it by 3 by 2 it is for a single atom okay so it means uh, this is the translational function for n atoms translational now let us see of the other things or you can also write it in this manner you write it in terms of v upon de broglie's constant to the power of 3 so additionally other than the kinetic energy mode just now i explained the molecular system will exhibit two or three distinct rotational energy modes okay and whether so when it will be 2 when it will be 3 will depend whether the molecule is linear or nonlinear because if it is linear you will have a different moment of inertia if it is nonlinear you will have a different moment of inertia so moment of inertia may act upon the three axis x y z coordinates so you may have three different states if it acts only in two direction it will have two rotational energy states so it means out of this 3n you have to subtract this energy modes that is the rotational energy modes and they are given by as i already derived the rotational partition function we saw was equal to t upon sigma theta r so what is this theta r this is the rotational temperature so rotational temperature you know is a function of moment of inertia and uh, sigma is the symmetry number symmetry number means how many ways you can orient a molecule without changing its actual nature so it means how many ways you can place a molecule without changing its original identity so as i told you for the diatomic molecule with its atoms not similar suppose hydrogen it will take a value of 2 so the remaining 3n minus 5 kinetic energy modes for linear molecules and 3n minus 6 modes for nonlinear molecules are linked with the vibrational degrees of freedom okay so it means overall 3n minus 5 how did this 5 comes see and 3n minus 6 how did this come because 3n minus 3 so it means all the atoms so you have the translational motion of the center of mass translational motion that to be fixed so it means uh, you know you cannot move a molecule from its center of motion 
So, you can reorient the molecule, you can do a vibrational analysis, you can do a rotational analysis, but you cannot move the atom. So, it means if you have 3 n number of atoms, so if you have n number of atoms, there will be kinetic energy mode is 3 n. So, minus 3 means you have the center of mass x, y and z coordinate to be subtracted from there. That is constraint, that is not a degree of freedom. So, the overall molecule we know it cannot move then either it can be minus 2, minus 2 it will be for linear molecules that is you have to also subtract, you have to subtract the rotational energy modes or it can be 3 n minus 3, same thing it is x, y, z minus 3. So, it means this will be valid for linear molecules and this will be valid for non-linear molecules. So, this takes the form 3n minus 5 and this takes the form 3n minus 6. So, these are the remaining degrees of freedom. So, from the main kinetic energy degree of freedom, you subtract the overall center of mass x, y, z coordinate because it is fixed, the molecule is not moving and then you also subtract the rotational energy modes if it is a linear molecule. If it is a non-linear molecule, you subtract the three coordinates respect to the center of mass velocity for x, y and z coordinate and further another 3 based on the rotational energy state for the non-linear molecule. So, it becomes 3 n minus 6. So, it means these many kinetic energy modes that is 3 n minus 5 or 3 n minus 6 are available and what are they are given as? They are given as vibrational energy modes. So, whatever remaining degrees of freedom that is 3 n minus 5 and 3 n minus 6 resemble the vibrational energy modes. So, in the context of the diatomic molecule, the vibration energy modes can be described as a manifestation of bond elongation. So, as I want to mention you, if suppose there is a 3 atom system, so you can either stretch the 2 atoms, let us say this is atom 1, 1, atom 2, atom 3, you can either stretch them like this manner or if you have a 3 atom, you can also stretch them unequally. Uh, let us say uh, you stretch it this in this direction and this goes in this direction. So, this is like symmetric stretching because both are pulled with a similar force in the same direction. Then this is in the opposite direction, these are asymmetric stretching. So, these are symmetric stretching and these are asymmetric stretching. Then you can also bend the molecule. So, you can bend these atoms. Let us say you want to bend uh, this bond, 2, 3 bond. So, if you want to bend them, so, that will be a bending motion. So, all this whether it is stretching or asymmetric stretching or symmetrical stretching or bending, it requires a energy. It requires a energy. So, while you do that, you associate with a certain energy and energy means it can be converted to a frequency and frequency if you get, you can convert to a vibrational temperature. This is exactly the different energy modes which we are talking about, the vibrational energy modes. So, uh, that is what I just summarized here. In the realm of polyatomic molecules, one encounters a variety of bond stretching and bond bending. So, these are bond stretching and these are bond bending. So, bending is easier, so it will take lesser amount of energy, while stretching takes more amount of energy, it is tougher. So, the frequency of the oscillation for these normal vibrations. So, when you do these molecules and have these frequencies, these are called normal vibrational modes it can be found out by the methodology such as infrared or Raman or by quantum mechanical computation. So, Raman spectroscopy or infrared spectroscopy will determine this force constants or it will determine this oscillation or vibration and it will find out and plot those uh, that is called as in a spectrum that is called spectrum. So, that will be unique to a particular molecule. So, compilation of these vibrational temperatures so, every normal mode will be associated with one vibrational temperature. This vibrational temperature you know it is nothing but theta v, I have talked about this earlier, this h nu upon k. h is the Planck's constant, k is the Boltzmann constant, mu is the frequency. So, this particular vibration temperature takes the form h nu by k. So, for a rotational partition function, let us see the expressions for a polyatomic gases. Okay. So, expression, let me write down the expression. So, for Q rotational, this takes the form, we have to consider now the moment of inertia, whether it is diametric or polyatomic. 
So, if you say it is the expression will be something like this 1 upon sigma 8 pi square i, i is the moment of inertia k into temperature divided by h square. Okay? So, this is the expression or this we know we have already derived is nothing but equal to theta r into sigma or if you substitute all the values because most of the values are known k, h, pi, h everything is known if you substitute those values you get an expression that is 0 0.02484 into 10 to the power of 40 10 to the power of 40 ib t by sigma. So, ib is the moment of inertia its units will be in gram per centimeter cube gram per centimeter square sorry not cube. Okay. This can be further be reproduced or reduced 0 0.6951 into t by b into sigma. So, b is the rotational constant which is unique for a particular compound. So, B is the rotational constant you can write we can write here B is the rotational constant in centimeter inverse. Okay? So, this is one way of writing it. So, for a nonlinear polyatomic molecule let us also write the part rotational partition function. For a nonlinear molecule the rotational partition function can be written as Q rotational. So, equations are a bit complicated here. Eight pi square E i k t by h square half. Then you have this root pi by sigma t cube. So, you have E i here it is i equal to 1 to 3 it means it is 3 principal moment of inertia axis x, y and z direction. So, you have to compute the moment of inertia in x, y and z direction. So, if you do that and then reduce it it represents a moment of inertia along it axis. So, it can be reduced to further constants. So, if I want to write it down it will be theta a b theta b c okay, which is equal to the power of half which is equal to 0 0.0069 into 10 raised to the power of 60 by sigma by i a to i b into i c the moment of inertia and the that is a b c into t cube then you do to the power of half. So, these are all constants. So, i a i b are the moments of inertia i a i b i c these are the moment moment of inertia. Okay. These are the moment of inertia in gram per centimeter square and uh, this or this theta a. So, a b c here I can write down further this expression I can further simplify it as q rotational. I can also write in this very simple form for a diatomic molecule 1.02736. T cube upon A B C to the power of half. Now, this A B C are rotational constants, are rotational constants so your units will be in centimeter inverse. So, now we see we have write out the equation for a linear molecule which is this part e equation let us say it is equation 1 for a linear molecule and this is the equation 2 for nonlinear polyatomic molecule. So, it means that if I know the rotational constants a, b, c 
across the three axis, then I can compute the rotational partition function for such a molecule. So, these rotational constants we will see how they are obtained. If I choose to do it for water, it is let us say this is I make one axis here, okay. If I make one axis here, I do it. So, let us suppose this is oxygen. So, this is let us say this is oxygen, this is hydrogen, this is hydrogen. So, it can rotate in this direction, okay, on this axis. This is one rotational energy state. So, because if it detects the rotational energy state, so there will be rotational constant. So, if there is a rotational constant, then it will be a rotational temperature associated with it. So, it means you will have another rotational state something like this. Let us say I make the same structure again for the water, water molecule. Now, it is rotating around this axis. Now, I will make the another axis something like this. So, it will rotate around this axis. So, this is oxygen, this is hydrogen, this is hydrogen. So, once it rotates around this action, it will have a separate in moment of inertia when it rotates upon horizontal axis, it will be another moment of inertia and there is another way what you can do is that this is outside the plane towards you. So, if it does that, so it means it will just rotate this line is towards you. So, it is rotates in this manner. So, you cannot see the axis. So, it is rotating first this is perpendicular to yourself, this is horizontal and this is perpendicular. So, there are three different states, three rotational energy states and thus you will have three associated rotational temperature. The rotational temperature associated with water is that is why it is given as 40.1, 20.9 and 13.4. For water, the rotational temperature comprising three different states is equal to 40.1, 20.9 and 13.4. So, these are the rotational temperatures, all units are in Kelvin. So, if you know these, then you can easily substitute and find out the rotational partition function for water, which is nothing but root pi upon sigma by T cube upon theta A, theta B, theta C whole cube by half. So, you have the theta A, theta B, theta C which is given here 40.1, 21.9, 13.4 corresponding to the rotation states either you rotate perpendicular, horizontal or perpendicular to the plane. So, with this you can get the overall rotational partition function for molecules which are non-linear in nature such as water. Now, for vibrational modes, we have said vibrational modes and rotational modes. Rotational modes I have already discussed in the previous slide. For the vibrational modes such as water, so there are many possibilities that is symmetric stretching. As I told you, symmetric stretching means you have oxygen here and you have hydrogen here, oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Symmetric means both are stretched equally in this direction which I have shown here. So, this is called OH symmetric stretching, OH symmetric stretching. So, this is infrared active, it means because of the dipole moment associated, it shows up in the spectra of infrared. So, it this is found out in terms of wave number close to 3585, 3585 centimeter inverse. Okay. Then it comes to the asymmetric stretching. So, what is asymmetric stretching is something like this, you have oxygen here and the two hydrogen attached, hydrogen, hydrogen and oxygen. So, it means here you have a stretching something like this. So, I can make this arrow here, this arrow here does not make any difference because ultimately they are equal of to each other. So, we can say here degenerate states. So, because you do not know which atom is what. So, you can the both these states are equal. So, but both these states show this is called the OH asymmetric stretching.
So, this shows up at a frequency of 3506. Then the final is the bending motion. So, what is this bending motion? Something like this, I again make the example of water. So, this is oxygen, this is hydrogen, this is hydrogen. So, it is bending, HOH bending. So, we can say this is HOH bending. So, when this bond bends, this is seen at 1885 centimeter inverse. So, these three frequencies, if you see, the stretching frequencies are higher than bending frequencies. It implies stretching requires more energy as compared to bending. So, bending a bond is easier than stretching a bond. So, if I want to convert these values into temperature, which equation will you use? You will have to use the equation that is vibrational temperature equals to H nu k. This we know by definition. You can do this H c omega in the terms of frequency, I am writing speed of light into the frequency into k. So, if you substitute the values here, 6.62 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joules per second into 3 into 10 to the power of 10 centimeter per second. Speed of light, I am converting into centimeters per second instead of meters per second. This is joules per second. And then you have the frequency which is there, centimeter inverse. And you divide it by the Boltzmann constant which is 1.3807 into 10 to the power of minus 23 joules Kelvin. So, if you see you have second second cancels out, centimeter centimeter cancels out, joule joule cancels out, you will only have Kelvin that is Kelvin inverse. So, Kelvin inverse goes up, so the overall unit becomes Kelvin. So, if I compute all these values, it will be a constant. What is this constant? 1.4387 into omega. So, it means if I know omega that is these wave numbers, I can multiply by 1.43 to get the vibrational temperature. So, for, for example, for water, the values are, so if you multiply 3585 with omega, this comes out to be close to, it is close to the vibrational temperature 5360. Kelvin and if I multiply 3506 with this value into 1.4387, this comes out to be close to 5160 Kelvin and if I multiply 1885 into omega that is 1.4387, it will be giving us close to 2290. So, these vibrations occurring whether it is bending or stretching that is they can be compared with the vibrational temperature. Okay, so, this is how this vibrational temperature comes into the picture. So, it has a match, it has a match with respect to the vibrational motion of the atoms and this vibrational motion of the atoms can be captured using either IR or Raman depending upon whether it is the dipole moment which is changing or the polarizability which is changing. If a polarizability changes, then it will be Raman active. If the dipole moment changes, it will be infrared spectra. So, it means we have discussed the vibrational energy modes. With this, we can write down the individual vibrational partition function by multiplying all the normal vibrational mode partition function. So, if I want to write down for each of this, it will depend upon. So, the your uh, summation or integral or whatever, it will grow from 1, 2, 3 n minus 6 in case of non-linear molecule or 1, 2, 3 n minus 5 in terms of linear molecule, okay. other things will remain the same. So, you have a product sum. Okay. If you have a product means, then the vibrational partition function will take the form Q vibrational will be equal to I goes from 1 to L. It means the product of all the terms where it is written as minus theta v i upon t same expression whatever we have derived earlier.
Now, if you see this expression, this is exactly the same. Only thing is, for water, it will grow from I will go from one to three, one two three, three vibration energy state. So you have to multiply three such terms corresponding to three vibrational energy. So now this L will be three n minus five for linear or three n minus six for non-linear because non-linear will have more number of rotational energy states. So now we are in a position to also write the electronic. So as I told you the downstream inerency and the lower there will be no such value of 0 because there are bonds present. So the value of the electronic energy state at the lowest state that is ground state is not equal to 0 but with some value. So it takes the equation omega ground state degeneracy into e to the power of minus first electronic state value by kt plus second state ground state electronic value into e to the power of minus second electronic state by kt plus like this it will go. So or sometimes what you do you can just ignore the higher terms because you have a exponential term which is increasing and then divided by kt. So this term is closely equal to 0. So if you do that it means it e to the power of 0 is almost 1. So a good approximation would be to take the first electronic state as the representation of the partition function. So now we have got expressions for all the terms that is Q translational, Q rotational, Q vibrational, Q electronic and Q nuclear. So this will be the basis of the overall partition function. And just to remind you, whenever you get this partition function, all the expression which we derived earlier for monoatomic gases will hold true. So you have to use those expression. For example, for internal energy we know it is 1 upon kt square, then you take the derivative of the logarithmic of q with respect to temperature keeping number of molecules and the constant volume as constant. Same way you have to do only the expression for q will change, other things will remain the same. So the partition function of polyatomic, of the polyatomic gas has a similar molecular structure, the exception is that as we just now saw is that the vibrational partition function now includes multiple terms corresponding to the frequencies of the normal vibrational modes. So you have to multiply the terms from 1 to 3n minus 5 or 3n minus 6 based on how many frequencies it has. Additionally, there may be two rotational modes or three rotational modes with depending upon whether the molecule is linear or non-linear. So let us write the overall partition function, substitute all the values. So Q will be equal to 2 pi summation of all the atoms summation of their masses into kt upon h square by 3 by 2 v translation then you have the rotational then the vibrational vibrational will go from let us say we want to write it for a non-linear molecule or a linear molecule let us say it will be 3n minus 5. So it will be e to the power of minus theta v by 2t 1 minus e to the power of minus theta v by t okay. and electronic partition function is ground state multiply by e to the power of minus e1 by kt the first electronic state. So this nuclear I am assuming it to be unity. So this is the expression for the linear state. So now I can little bit I will write to um, subsume some terms. So this to make it more simpler, this will remain as it is 3 by 2. This will also remain as it is. Now what I will do, I will multiply this e to the power of minus theta v into e to the power of minus e1 by kt because we know that I have to express these in terms of dissociation energy and dissociation energy uh, let me recall it is nothing but d naught is equal to minus of e 
ground state electronic energy plus half h mu. So, want to pick up these two values because theta v I can write as h nu by k. So, from there if I want to pick up those values k as common, so I can write them in terms of d naught. So, if I do those maths correctly, so you will be having this expression will be as it is. So, I am just dividing the numerator with the denominator. So, it will be 1 minus e to the power of minus theta v. So, this will be i actually, I am sorry, I have not written here, this will be i. So, i. Now, this term actually e to the power of minus theta v to i gets multiplied with this term. So, that is why this term I have written as unity, it is not divided with the numerator. The numerator is not divided with the denominator. So, this term I have combined or coupled it with the term which is appearing in the electronic partition function. So, this means I can write this term in this manner e to the power of minus d naught by k t. So, d naught is this expression which I have taught. So, is another simpler way of writing is instead of writing the elect if you do not know the electronic state of the ground state. So, you can write down and combine them and form the electronic dissociation energy. So, this is about the overall partition function. So, for a nonlinear molecule everything remains the same only thing is your uh, expression for this will change. So, here q will be equal to let us say we will have the vibrational the translational motion to be the translational partition function as before k t by h square v. Here I will write to express the rotational partition function in terms of moment of inertia or the rotational constants across the three axes. So, if you write in that manner it will be root pi by sigma by t cube by theta a into theta b into theta c. So, I did not mention how this theta a, theta b and theta c come about it is for a nonlinear molecule. So, you have the rotational constants. Then, but only thing is this summation will go from now instead of 3 n minus 5 it is 3 n minus 6. Other terms will remain the same. So, I will just write the expression 1 minus e to the power of minus theta v i by t. Then write everything in terms of omega 1 into e to the power of d naught by k t okay, where a similar explanation can be written for nonlinear molecule. So, this is the expression for a nonlinear molecule is follows the same manner for a linear molecule. So, d naught uh, is as I just told you d naught just want to mention here minus of e 1 plus here it will be half of summation of h nu i. So, here will be more number of frequencies. So, if it is a higher number of frequencies you have to add the h nu and then multiply by half. So, or I can also write d naught by k t from this expression as minus e of electronic state by k t take the minus outside plus half of right in terms of vibrational temperature theta v i by t. So, this is the overall expression okay, for the partition function of a nonlinear molecule. So, now you have got the partition function for linear as well as nonlinear molecule. Now, let us see if we can write the thermodynamic properties using exactly the same definition we did for monoatomic gases that is a equal to minus k t ln q then u is equal to minus 1 by k t square into the derivative of logarithmic of q with the temperature likewise. So, for a nonlinear molecule what will be the expression? So, a by n k t in this case a by n k t I am writing in terms of dimensionless number that is a by n k t that is minus ln of 2 pi summation of m i to k t by. So, it is 
uh, a equal to uh, you know it is k t l n q. So, k t I have written here per mole I am dividing by Avogadro's number. So, I will get the value per mole. So, that is why this takes the form the exact expression for translation will be kept. It is basically a constant. So, if you do that it will be h square 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 ve by n then uh, you have ln of root pi by sigma t cube by half. Then you have two more terms plus then summation of all the vibrational terms i goes from 1 to 3 n minus 6 theta v i by 2 t plus ln of 1 minus e to the power of minus theta i v i by t. So, this entire thing is in the bracket. Okay. You simplify the term basically the ln term ln of q term. Then you will have the So, if I want to skip this step, I write in terms of decision constants. So, the terms will remain the same, not much change in the terms. Only what you will have is, okay, let me just complete this maybe. Ln of. Now, just club these two terms. If you do that, the A by N K T you will get is something like this, right in terms of dissociation energy. So, if you do that minus L N of, then again 2 pi A my K T by H square 3 by 2 theta a, theta b, theta c to the power of half, then there will be some alignment in the terms. This will go to 3 n minus 6 and uh, you will have a ln term here. Theta v i by t bracket close and you will have a term which is plus sorry minus you sir, add these two terms this one this is the overall term. So, this is the term for nonlinear molecule. So, for a linear molecule what will be the changes? It will exactly be the same not much changes. The only changes what you will have in the case of linear molecule is I may write down here this term this this term then this term this will be equals to you know what it is it is sigma by theta r for linear molecule for linear and this one this one will go to 3 n minus 5 3 n minus 5 everything else remains the same so, this way you can obtain the Helmholtz free function for both linear or linear nonlinear molecule. Then you have the u by n k t, you do the derivative with respect to temperature. So, you will get the dimensionless number which is u by n k t. This you will get is same as 3 plus summation i goes from 1 to 3 n minus 6 then theta v please do the mathematics yourself you do the derivative with respect to temperature of the partition function derived earlier by 1 minus e to the power of minus theta v i by t 
bracket close minus d naught by k t. So, it means you have a value of 3 plus summation of y goes from 1 to 3 and minus 6 theta v this will be theta v i e to the power of minus theta v i by t by 1 minus 1 minus e to the power of minus theta v i by temperature minus d naught by k t. So, it means you see the number is more than 1.5. So, in the case of monoatomic gas it is 1.5. So, you have some value which is already 3 plus a certain contribution. So, this additional contribution is due to the additional degrees of freedom primarily due to the vibrational energy state of the molecule. So, for uh, let us say for uh, this is for let us say uh, non-linear for linear you will get almost similar value for linear it is only you will get is u by n k t will be here 5 by 2 plus the exactly the same term 5 by 2 summation but this will be 3 n minus 5 theta v i by t minus d naught by k. So, it means if you compare both the u by n k t for a linear and a non-linear molecule, so linear will always having a value less because it is 5 by 2 with such a number. So, this number is always less than 1 and this will also be less than 1 and these values if you compare. So, overall if you see the internal energy for a non-linear molecule will always be higher in this case. So, now we also do the C V let us say for C V by n k the you take the derivative of this term with respect to temperature you get the specific heat specific heat let us say for nonlinear this will be equal to 3 plus 3 plus summation of i goes from 1 to 3 n minus 6 again you have theta y 1 upon sin hyperbolic theta v i. Okay. So, you have 3 plus value which is hyperbolic sin hyperbolic. So, actually this hyperbolic should be outside and this bracket should be inside sin hyperbolic of theta v i by 2 t. So, it has a summation on the outside. Same thing we can also derive for C v by n k in terms of linear. In case of linear it will be here 5 by 2 plus i goes from 1 to 3 n minus 5 then uh, theta v i by this will be 40 whole square 1 upon sin of hyperbolic theta v i by 2 t and the entire thing squared. Similar expression. So, what the important outcome of this is the specific heat is a function of hyperbolic function of the vibrational temperature that is important. Again if you see this is uh, having will be a higher value it is 3 here as compared to 5 by 2 here this is only due to the additional degree of freedom for a nonlinear molecule. So, it has a higher value of C V. Now based on this specific heat they have come up the database which is DIPPR Design Institute of Physical Property this is obtained from this website they have kept all the specific data. So, specific data you may say that we always use the expression which is of the exponential term in terms of temperature, but what they have done. So, they have the C V we always talk about in this manner A plus B T plus C T square plus D T cube. 
for chemical engineers we always use this type of expression in terms of temperature dependency but if you see most of the terms you have sign hyperbolic in the numerator so the dippr what they have done is they have actually regressed all the data they have not used this type of formula they have used a formula something like this cp equals to k1 plus k2 into k3 by t sin hyperbolic k3 by t whole square plus k4 by k5 by t by cos of cos hyperbolic So it means even though we are very much more familiar with this expression A plus BT plus CT square plus DT cube, but this particular database DIPPR does not use this type of expression. It uses the expression which is written below and here the constants are K1, K2, K3, K4 and K5. So if you see again here the sign hyperbolic functions appears because the reason is we have just now seen that the specific heat can be written in terms of hyperbolic function. So that is the way they what they do they will have the data at different temperatures they will fit those data and obtain the parameters k1, k2, k3, k4 and k5. So you will have this data you can go through this website you will see the specific heat capacity are expressed in this manner in this constants. So thus the outcome of this why I am I telling this expression it is directly an outcome of the statistical thermodynamics route where the specific heat are expressed in terms of hyperbolic function. So then we continue with the other properties that is mu by kT in terms the chemical potential for a non-linear molecule. This will be equal to it is minus ln the, the translational expression 2 pi summation of mi kT by h square. So you have V by n also because you are doing it per respect to per molecule which is Avogadro's number V by n into ln by root pi over sigma T cube same expression not much change because you are doing what how do you get mu mu by kt mu by kt is just do the derivative of the Helmholtz free function which we got earlier with respect to number of molecules. When you do that you get this expression basically. So you will get then plus summation of i goes to 3n minus 6 kt. So this is the expression for the chemical potential in terms of non-linear molecule. For a linear molecule is exactly the same, almost the same, not much change except the fact that this term will be replaced by ln of T by theta r and this term will be going to 3n minus 5 otherwise the terms remains the same. So this is how you go for non-linear molecule as well as linear molecules here we are obtaining the chemical potential and then we go to the last property that is entropy. In case of entropy you have S upon NK again here you will have a value of 4 plus ln of entropy you know how to get it it is K ln Q plus K into do Q by dou T. So if you do that expression you will get the value which is 2 pi V by 2, V by n, some ln com complete, then ln of root pi by sigma, then you have T cube, theta A, theta B, theta C, half, then plus you have the vibrational term, 
i goes from 1 to 3 and minus 6. Here the terms are bit different theta v i t e to the power of theta v i by t then 1 minus e to the power of minus theta v i by t minus ln of plus ln of ok so here you do not have any decision constant here so this is for the nonlinear molecules you have I am writing a purpose because 4 plus some expression the same thing for a linear not much change for linear expression you will see s by n k instead of 4 it will be less than 4 then you will have the same expression but you will have let us say if I want to write it down so this expression why am I writing again and again so that it actually puts you across that how the partition coefficient is written for the overall expression these expressions one of the quantum chemical packages they do it for you it is much simpler but you should know what is happening what are the expressions happening at the back end now here I have written 3 and minus 5 instead of 3 and minus 6 that is only one of the uh, change you have to do for this expression theta v i by t then 1 minus e to the power of minus theta v i by t minus of ln of 1 minus e to the power of minus theta v i by t bracket close then ln of omega now if you compare both these expressions for linear and nonlinear you have some expression 4 plus some value while for the entropy for linear it is 7.2 plus value obviously for the linear molecule the entropy is lesser as compared to nonlinear molecules owing to the fact it has more number of degrees of freedom okay so because of the additional degrees of freedom due to the vibrational energy states so it is this this reason uh, you have a difference in value of the entropy so this actually completes our definition of the various thermodynamic properties starting from the partition function then describing the rotational and vibrational states and finally coming to an expression for chemical potential entropy entropy then specific heat then internal energy so please revise these expressions go through the expression and be very careful about the derivation part as also about the units so i will conclude my lecture here so please try to go through our original textbook sandler's book and also go through this particular nptl lecture that is the physical and electrochemical characterization chemical engineering which is offered from iit Guwahati, which actually talks about up the vibrational energy states and talks about the ir and the raman spectra thank you mm -hmm.